So we're back today for more popper games, and this time we've got Red Tron. So this is a list I saw recently, and unlike the other Tron variants like Ultratron or Ephemerate Tron that are trying to do more like value or combo stuff, this one is all in on red stuff. So obviously we've got the Tron lands, but we don't actually have a set of four of all of them. Only three power plants and three mines, and then the rest are just red mana. And we've got Bolts and Volcanic Spites to damage stuff, along with main deck Fiery Cannonades as sweepers. Additionally, Magmatic Sinkhole and Rolling Thunder as the big mana endgame payoff. And of course, there's Candy Trail, Expedition Map to Assemble Tron, and Filigree Familiars on three, Crimson Fleet Com Commodores on four for the Monarch, Self Assemblers. So these are artifacts that basically go fetch another one of themselves out of the deck. And then we've got Boarding Party and Oliphant as other just like big endgame cards. So it's not exactly a Tron deck in the traditional sense. It's more like a hybrid between a big mono ramp Tron and sort of like a red control deck. And then in the sideboard, we've of course got Red Blasts, the third Cannonade, four Pyrite Spell Bombs, Flaring Pain, and Cast Into the Fire. So like how Mono Blue Tron in Modern is not really a ramp deck, it's more of like a control deck that's using the Tron. I think this is more of a red control deck that is using the Tron lands, more so than a traditional Tron deck. And let's get going. Ooh boy, excited to be back in Popper, the only good constructed format. On the play round one, we've got two Tron lands and Mountain and Volcanic Spite to filter out, so this looks pretty good, let's keep this. All right, power plant, go. Forest, Arboreal Grazer into Rot Farm. Okay, Mountain, and we'll just pass back to them. Hidden Necropolis. All right, well, I am just going to spite this to cycle a card. No! I should have main phased it, apparently. Oh, well. Four mana. Oh, is this going to be Thorn? No, five mana. Spore Mound. Whenever a land ETBs, create a 1-1 one, one Sapperling. Huh. All right, spite that. Let's put back Rolling Thunder. What? Oh, did I just happen to draw another Rolling Thunder? Jeez. All right, well, we can't do anything. Back to them. Avenging Hunter, there's the initiative. Oh boy, man. We're just going to be so far behind now. Okay, map. Crack the map. Go fetch mine. Play mine. Play self-assembler. And let's go grab another self-assembler and back to them. So counters on this dude. So it's just Golgari mid-range, but with like weird cards in it. Cast down our self-assembler. Well, the boarding party maybe can get through? Maybe? I don't know. I don't think I have anything that kills this is the problem. Olafont. All right, so... I need to steal the initiative, like, really badly. So, cast, boarding party, cascade trigger. We cascade it into rolling thunder, which does nothing when we cast it for free. So, all right, please don't have instant speed removal. Combat, swing. They did not. All right, grab a mountain, play mountain, play self-assembler, trigger, grab another self-assembler. And then this thing has trample, so it doesn't matter if I block it. Although, no, I have to block it because they get to uh, trap us next, right? So I actually do have to absorb some of this damage or else we're just going to die. I guess technically we're not dead instantly. We'll go to one if I don't block them. That seems precarious. But then I can't steal the initiative back. So we take seven, go to six, then trap down to one. I guess we're going to one. So I can rolling thunder and I think kill both of these and then steal the initiative back. Is this sorcery speed activation? Yes, it is. Ooh, candy trail gains life. All right, so uh, X needs to be at least six here. So rolling thunder, choose any number of creatures or planeswalkers. Let's just figure out how much mana I have. 2, 4, 7, 9, 11. So 9 damage total. So that's 7 here, and then I'll only have 2 mana left over. So I should leave 1 left over for Candy Trail. All right, Rolling Thunder. Here, here, here. 6, 1, 1. And then we got to pay all this. All right, Rolling Thunder. I assume they're going to play some kind of Deadly Dispute type card. Yeah, Deadly Dispute. The plant. Uh-huh. Scatter the seeds, create 3, 1, 1s. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. The one thing that we can't actually survive. All right. So let's see. It's Golgari stuff with a bunch of sack outlets. I guess we want cannonades if they're spreading a bunch of things all over the place. And probably don't want this and this, though. What's kind of bad? We need still Volcanic Spite for some stuff, but not other stuff. Hmm. So none of this can kill Avenging Hunter anyway. Hmm. Avenging Hunter is a 5-4, right? Yeah. All right, I'm inclined to say no spites and bring in spell bombs. I'll cut one bolt. That's probably fine. All right, can't keep that. Can keep that. What am I putting away? Probably the cycling land. Yeah, all right, put the cycling land back. So let's go power plant, candy trail. I do want crimson fleet. I don't want rolling thunder, so we'll top bottom. 
All right, we're just gonna pop the candy trail. So back to them, two green sources. All right, pop candy trail. All right, so we gotta cycle the Oliphant if nothing else happens, right? I wanna guarantee that I have Crimson Fleet Commodore next turn, so I can't afford to play anything that doesn't allow me to cycle Oliphant. So we'll play this and then we'll play Pyrite and then we'll just pass. Sundering Growth here. All right, well, I guess I'm drawing a card. Wait, I can just shoot the plant token? Is that better? I don't think it is. Like who cares if they have a plant token, right? Let's just draw a card. They'll have two plant tokens. Yeah, let's just, let's just draw. And then that just fizzles because the target was removed. Yeah. Plays another Colony Garden, that's fine. So they just don't have Black Mana right now. Saprolink, so it's Golgari tokens? Sure. All right, Cycle Oliphant. It is a bit awkward that they have two 1-1s one now. This does have Trample. It's just so bad for me if I like play this, they attack and then they just have removal. Let's say I play this, right? And then they just go removal spell, attack you, and then it takes multiple, and then I guess I can just play the other Commodore and get the initiative back. Uh, all right. They don't have Black Mana, or Monarch, not initiative. You, you, you get what I mean. What's up? Welcome to the chat, Kid Burrito. Are they convoking a Sapling thing? Scout of the Seeds, yep. And then they're gonna take the Monarch, so we get a, a block here. Takes the Monarch. All right, ooh, Rolling Thunder, what a draw. So I can kill all of these 1-1s, one but then they still have another 1-1 one -one to attack back with. Hmm. So they can trade with the Crimson Fleet Commodore. I think I just attack them and then they trade and then I Rolling Thunder their other 1-1 one -one so they can't get it back. That seems like the best use of mana to me. All right, attack. So yeah, then they'll trade, but it doesn't matter because we trample. I don't know why they're blocking with everything. Okay, I have no idea why they triple blocked. Oh, was, I guess they triple blocked in case I had instant speed removal. That makes sense. All right, so let's just kill all of their tokens. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, three, this is going to be three, right? Yeah. So it's done. All right. End step Monarch. They just don't have black mana this game, seemingly. Okay, so playing another Commodore after I already have the Monarch doesn't matter. So let's just play Self-Assembler. Trigger. Sundering Growth, sure. So it's Golgari Populate, or Golgari Tokens. All right, they finally found their black source. Thorn of the Black Rose, Monarch Returns. Okay, so now we get the Monarch back. Hey, there it is. And I guess I want to prevent them from using Deadly Dispute type cards, so let's just kill this. Like Candy Trail. Uh, multiple removal spells on top seems good to me. Top, top. Back to them. Tithing Blade, our dude dies, okay. Still have the Monarch though. So I don't know what the next top card of my deck is, so just play Boarding Party. Cascade Trigger. Yeah, sure, Cast Candy Trail. Don't want any more Mountains. Probably don't want Cannonade either. Bottom that. Attack. Another Tithing Blade. What's the condition on flipping this over? Craft with a creature for five. Another boarding party. Wow. All right. Boarding party. Cast the map. Go to combat. All right. We got game two. So was anything that I did there wrong? Should I have different uh, removal spells? I guess... So Bolt is cheaper than Cast Into the Fire. Cast Into the Fire... They're trying to make like a bunch of 1-1s, one which it, it looks like battling over the Monarch and whatnot is going to really matter in this matchup. So maybe... I just want all the cast into the fires, and then I cut one of the pyrites. That's uh, some cards for sure. I think I can still keep it though. They're a very slow deck as well. Forest, Grazer, Blaze, Hidden Acropolis. Okay, Mountain, go. I guess actually, no, I shouldn't have played Mountain. I should have played Power Plant first. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so they're gonna duress cast into the fire out of our hand. That's fine. Bajuka Bog, eat our thing, sure. All right, I'm just gonna cycle this crater. So over to them. They just got nothing to do. All right, cycle this, play filigree, gain two life. And this insulates us from uh, edict effects. So one of the black rows would be kind of an issue here. Oh, they're going to convoke a thing. Okay. Why do that now? Why not do it later since it's an instant? All right, candy trail. With this trigger on the stack, I'm going to draw a card anyway, right? So I guess it's fine. Yeah, scry first. I don't really want either of these. So let's bottom both of them. But what I, there's, th there's things I could play for one mana. Let's pop candy trail. All right, well... Can't play that yet, but this will be good to wipe out all of these saplings and this plant token. Tithing Blade, eat our dude. Uh-huh. Then we get to draw. All right. Rolling Thunder. Okay, so I'm definitely popping this. Can I'm definitely casting Cannonade. So let's do it in their upkeep. So Pirate Spell Bomb. I guess I should just draw this right now, right? Because if I hit a land, I want to be able to play it. Draw a card. All right, so pass to them. Cannonade in your upkeep. They have one card in their hand. If it's a Deadly Dispute thing, we want to make them use them on, on their turn. All right, no action from them. We're one off boarding party. I don't feel like casting self assembler here is that helpful. I think I just want to start getting boarding party mana. So let's go candy trail, scry. They're going to shoot it? No? Yeah, okay. 
I want mine. I guess Oliphant is fine too. So top, top, pop this, play mine, and then over to them. Deadly Dispute the Tithing Blade, sure. I'm just waiting for some kind of like Thorn of the Black Rose or like some other problem card. Eats the treasure. I'm surprised they're not just eating Grazer. All right, uh, boarding party, Cascade. Cascade into Fleet Commodore, geez. Monarch, all right, go to combat. Attack with boarding party. Block and then Fanatical Offering, sure. We drew Rolling Thunder off the Monarch. So they've drawn a lot of cards, so they've managed to dig their way back up to five. So I think the fact that our board is here and we have the Monarch right now is going to be the deciding factor. Because even though, yes, they steal the Monarch back, they need double removal to get rid of our guys. Map the, th the Thorn, revealing a Tithing Blade. I would assume they want to keep that. Cast down this dude. All right. So then we just kill this. So Sinkhole, kill that. Uh, does it matter what we delve? Does anything in our graveyard have any graveyard interactions in this deck? I don't think they do. I don't think their interaction with our graveyard matters either. So let's just eat everything. Kill that, then we'll play Self-Assembler. Actually, at this point, am I going to cycle Oliphant? No, yeah, okay, let's just play Self-Assembler. Trigger, grab another one, then Combat, Attack, steal the Monarch back. Tithing Blade, I'll sack, um... Oh, okay, they're not giving us a choice. All right, both our guys are dead, but we still have the Monarch. Duress. Well, we got a lot of things. If I were them, I think I would take... S depends. Yeah, it was between, between Sinkhole and Rolling Thunder. It depends on what's in their hand for Sinkhole to kill, but if they don't have a creature for us to kill, then it's definitely Rolling Thunder. Um, let's just take, let's just cast Boarding Party. Cascade into Candy Trail. Trigger, mine on top, cast into the fire on top. Well, bottom both of those. All right, let's attack with the Boarding Party. And this puts them into range of just dying to Rolling Thunder. We drew another Rolling Thunder. Tithing Blade, uh-huh, that's fine. So now this dude dies. Blaze Avenging Hunter, let's just sinkhole that. So now they have the initiative. All right, um, we have seven mana, so Rolling Thunder's five damage. So I could potentially, and we have Pirate Small Bomb, so I could potentially just shoot them twice, right? So let's cycle, let's Mountain Cycle Oliphant and play this. Then I'm gonna play Self Assembler, grab another one, and then Pirate Spell Bomb. And then even if they kill the Self Assembler or play a blocker, I can just shock them with the Pirate Spell Bomb and then I have exactly enough mana to kill them at the next turn. Sapling Migration, make a bunch of 1-1s. One That's fine. All right, end step, shock you. I guess if the very last card in their hand is like Moments Piece or something, or like some kind of damage prevention ability. Let's just Rolling Thunder here for six. One, two, six. All right, is the last card in your hand some kind of life gain or damage prevention? It is? No, it's not. Okay, I don't know why we're messing around with this then. Is there like a Convoke Fog that I don't know about? Round two on the draw. Hmm, we only have one land, but we do have a candy trail to fix for more. How many lands are in this deck? 18 plus Oliphant. That seems acceptable. Although I don't need to just find one land. I need to find multiple lands. Well, okay. If I find one land, then I can use the Volcanic Spike to filter into more. I, and I'm on the draw. All right, I'm going to keep this. Snow Covered Forest into Utopia Sprawl. Okay, so there's a multiple decks this could be for red. Okay, so it's uh, Cascader Ponza. So Mountain, Candy Trail... Anything that's not a land is going to the bottom. Tapped Highland Forest plays another Utopia Sprawl. Well, we're getting outclassed really quickly. Also, if we don't draw a second land here, we're basically just dead. Okay. No land in our top five cards. Yeah, and now we're getting blown out of the game by Stone Rains. All right, Cascade Ponza. So we want what exactly? Uh, most of their creatures, I'm assuming, are bigger than what these spells can even hit. Cannonade's probably completely useless against them, as is Bolt. They might have Jewel Thief or, like, you know, some other random things, but I feel it's probably better just not to have Bolt and then play Pirate Spell Bomb. I don't want any of this stuff, so I guess I'll just leave two Bolts in. Oh, once again, only one land. Oh, we're not keeping this. All right, two Tron lands and an Oliphant to fix. So let's keep this and put the bolt back. All right, mine, go. Snow forest into wild growth. All right, cycle Oliphant for a mountain. Let's play the mountain, go. Tap Highland forest, plays into the thing. So the problem is they're just gonna outramp us. All right, tower go, tap land. And now we're gonna get thermocarsted, yeah. And an arbor elf. All right, volcanic spike, kill that. Problem is I don't actually want to cycle anything because I don't want to get rid of my Crimson Fleets and I don't want to get rid of my lands. So let's all right, play this, go. Tap land. They've got five mana. Jewel Thief. Lano or Visionary. Yuck. Well, I have to play Crimson Fleet. I can't just not play it. Even though they get to steal the Monarch, then hopefully we can steal it back. 
I guess I could trade and then just play another Crimson Fleet, right? Boarding party, of course. What'd they reveal? Lanor Visionary, sure. So I'm kind of like, I have to block and then just play another Crimson Fleet to steal the Monarch again. It's such a bitch, but yeah. This thing has Trample. All right, just block the more damage. Man, we really needed to draw land there too. All right, Crimson Fleet. The problem is they just get way ahead on mana way faster than we can do anything. And they can Thermocarst us to get us behind on mana, so we just can't keep up with them. So if they just attack with everything, I guess I don't block because I need to guarantee that I can steal the Monarch back. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. There's so many cards. They're just going to play multiple. Yeah. My God, they have so much to play. It's just insane. So, I mean, I can like attack. They can have multiple blocks. This is seven total toughness. So I don't even get through with Pyrite Spell Bomb. I can steal the Monarch back and then I have nothing else to do. Yeah, we're dead. On the draw round three. All right, this hand looks fine. We'll keep this. Silver Bridge, so probably Affinity. Yeah, so just guy, just guy Affinity in all likelihood. All right, well, Mountain. Then we're just going to map for one of the other Tron lands. Lorien Revealed Cycle. Augur of Bolas. All right, I guess it's not Affinity. So it's just guy Ephemerate, and they just have these artifact lands here. Reveals Cleansing Wildfire. All right, pop the map. Grab a mine. Man, it sucks that they have the wildfire, though, and they can keep us off Tron, but what can we do? Ooh, we Troned anyway. All right, well, hmm. All right, play a new map, and then I guess we just pass. So they try to ephemerate this, I spite it. Another island. Cleansing wildfire targeting this, sure. Go grab a mountain. Attack there, that's fine. All right, map for the mountain, for the uh, tower. Playing Crimson Fleet seems like a really bad idea here. There's so many ways that just goes horribly wrong for us. I think it's probably better to just play Candy Trail, and hold up Volcanic Spite. Another mine in case they blow up. If, no, if they blow up one of these lands, it's going to be the tower. So let's just bottom both of these. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to draw in response to this. Since two of our lands are on the bottom of our deck anyway, let's just do it now. Well, we drew a land regardless. That is a lot of Crimson Fleets. Prone at Brainstorms. All right, we take one from the Augur. They're ephemerating now. Hmm. It's just, again, such a bad idea to try to land Crimson Fleet when they have a creature in play. So I feel like I just kill this, makes their their comeback ephemerate useless. So let's just shoot this thing. I should put something back on the bottom. Let's put back an Urza's Mine, I guess. All right, so over to them. Ephemerate can't rebound on anything. And then we can start dropping either Boarding Parties or Crimson Fleets next turn. Brainstorm. <sighs> Augur All right, still can't deploy any Crimson Fleet Commodores at the moment. So they have a Scred and they have a Lorien Revealed that I know about, right? They might not have Scred because of how many times they've brainstormed, but I assume they probably still have Scred. Although they don't actually have too much Snowlands. All right, let's play Boarding Party. Trigger, Self-Assembler into play. Trigger, attack with the Boarding Party. All right, Scred is actually up to being decent now. Cleansing Wildfire, one of our lands, sure. Go grab a mountain. All right, let's just put the pressure on them and uh, cast another Boarding Party. Trigger, Volcanic Spite target your guy bolting uh something i don't know this uh the boarding party sure all right spite resolve question mark counter spell on the boarding party yeah the spite resolve put back cannonade go to combat swing all right if they're not deploying a creature i'm gonna bolt them all right combat attack cast into the fire on our dude sure all right second main play crimson fleet counter spell all right play another crimson fleet this one resolves we get the monarch I guess I don't know for sure that they have Scred, but it's information of something they might have. Tap land. Archaeomancer. So they can get back... No, Ephemerate didn't rebound, right? So they're just going to get back a removal spell. Okay, let's force them to use the removal spell. Combat. Attack. There's the removal. All right, let's play Self-Assembler. Grab another Self-Assembler. Instead of Crimson Fleet, I think I actually just want to play Filigree Familiar here because... Uh, it means that if they manage to like kill both of our guys or something and then attack us, we have, an we have another Monarch card that I can just play to get the Monarch back. Also, if they have multiple removal spells, it means the Filigree Familiar will at least draw us a card. Moldrift or Hardcast, Preordain. They bottomed both cards. Even though, yes, this does have Tramples, so it's like a little better maybe to have this in play instead. All right, we're out of Self-Assemblers, right? So let's uh, go to Combat, attack with both creatures. Moldrifter hits, gets the Monarch, so we have to, like, yeah, so they're blocking here. They did not have Ephemerate. All right, let's play Self-Assembler, and we're out, right? Yeah. Filigree Familiar, Monarch Trigger, Bolt, our dude, sure. All right, Boarding Party's another great draw. So can't block Moldrifter, they get to steal the Monarch. They gotta have something to deal with all the stuff that's in play. Archaeomancer, 
I would assume they just what pick up cleanse pick up um cast into the fire so that they can kill self assembler maybe yeah pick up cast into the fire okay so they I don't I officially don't know what's in their hand then because that information is incorrect all right cast boarding party cascade trigger fiery cannonade would kill our own dudes although it kills their guys too and then we get to draw cards yeah I'll cast fiery cannonade that's fine they're gonna cast into fire our self assembler anyway. So let's draw some cards. It gets rid of this stuff. It gets rid of our Mold Drifter as well. Draw, draw. Ooh, we drew Tower. Go to combat. Swing. They have to have a removal spell for this. Okay, so they did have Scred. So Scred. Cast into the fire on our dude. Apparently tapping out all of these Tron lands was incorrect. All right, let's steal the Monarch back. Trigger. Play Candy Trail. Uh, I guess these both are fine, actually. Top, top. This is just a big threat, and the Candy Trail cycle scries two cycles for three mana, which is fine. Late to dinner, get back Archaeomancer, and then Archaeomancer gets back late to dinner. Yeah, sure. Well, they must have a removal spell then, right? Because they got to be able to kill Crimson Fleet. Late to dinner on the Archaeomancer. All right, and then the, and then this one will get back a removal spell. Bolt, sure. All right, well, let's just try to kill one of these. Okay, so I'm down two boarding parties, but there is the possibility I could draw another one or Rolling Thunder or whatever. So let's pop the Candy Trail. Volcanic Spite. Let's play the Candy Trail. Another Oliphant. All right, bottom, top, pop the Candy Trail. So we'll attack and they'll just kill it, which is fine. Go to combat. Yeah, all right, they kill our guy. So how much mana do I have? Six, 11. So I have enough to play Oliphant plus Self Assembler. I probably want to kill this now before they find an Ephemerate. So let's kill this. And I mean, they just die if I find Rolling Thunder, right? So let's put Self Assembler back. All right. Tap, 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 Oliphant. Tap, 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 Oliphant. Union of the Third Path. Draw a card, gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Preordain. One top, one bottom. Plays Preordain. I'm assuming the card they left on top was that Preordain. Two bottom. Dawnbringer Cleric, gain two life. Okay, but these are going to be 8-8s eight with Trample. Rolling Thunder, well, attempt to go to combat. Scred, all right, they're dead to Rolling Thunder then. Whoop, nine damage. Rolling Thunder. All right, they have foods. I completely forgot about that. They still died of this Trample damage, right? Yeah, okay. Whew, not punished for my own hubris. So that was a long-ass game. So definitely Red Blast. Uh, What else? The Cannonades don't... The Cannonades can kill... Archaeomancer. They can also kill it in a way that Ephemerate doesn't save it because it's not targeted, right? So like if they have an Archaeomancer or a Moldrifter and they have Ephemerate, they can Ephemerate it, sure, but then this still kills it. Uh, what else? So their threats are Archaeoman Archaeomancer, Augur, Dawnbringer Cleric, Moldrifter. It's all small creatures. I'm not very inclined to pay two mana for a three damage removal spell that's targeted against the Ephemerate deck or the deck that's playing late to dinners in it. In fact, our removal in general is probably not that great. Like our targeted removal. Is Sinkhole good? I mean, we haven't, we didn't see any big creatures from them, but we can't assume that they don't have them. So sometimes you can snipe a guy in response to Ephemerate. So that's why Bolt's not like completely useless. Let's cut. If they are running some kind of bigger creature. I don't want to just get rid of my only sinkholes. On the other hand, I feel like Bolt's a better counter to Ephemerate stuff. It also goes straight to their face, which this doesn't. So let's get, yeah, okay, let's get rid of one of the sinkholes. There's also an argument to playing Pyrite Spell Bomb to just have it be able to cantrip, but um, it kills less of their creatures. All right, let's do that. Okay, uh, we only have one land, but we've got multiple Oliphants to find more land, so that's fine. So their deck is very, very slow, right? It's just about built it's just about controlling the board and then building up value through ephemerate and late to dinner loops so we have plenty of time to assemble all the mana of our own huh all right tower map back to them they are playing cleansing wildfire so we can't actually guarantee that we have any sort of tron mana until way later in the game cleansing wildfire their own thing to ramp mm -hmm. so i mean i guess we just map right back to them murmuring mystic that's an issue so they did have a bigger creature all right let's grab just one of the tron lands Man, if we can't deal with that right now, you bolt. Ugh. Okay, well, do I just draw with this on the stack? I guess so. All right, what's on top? Don't want either of these. And now this is gonna get completely out of hand. Thank goodness I have boarding parties to deal with the birds at least. So I'm not automatically dead to this card, but I don't have like infinite time to deal with it either. Cleansing wildfire on our own thing, sure. 
I guess the best draw would be Red Blast. So I can Red Blast this. Double Bolt. I kind of have to do it now, right? And then if they just have Hydro Blast, then we just lose the game. I mean, we have to. All right, let's cycle Oliphant, Mountain, Bolt, Bolt, oh, Dispel, and then they make another bird. I mean, we're not technically like unable to win the game from here, but it's so bad for us. Let's just concede this and move to the next game. All right, so need Sinkhole. Uh, what's bad? I, I'm inclined to just say Bolt is not great. These are actually so not great that, you know what, screw it. Let's just bring in Pyrite Spell Bomb instead. They're also a counter spell deck. What's the odds we can actually Rolling Thunder them ever? I guess, like, it's not impossible. All right, let's run this. Two Tron lands and fixing with Red Blasts. All right, keep this. Urza Mine, Trail, Trigger. Well, bottom both of these. Tap land. All right, back to them. I guess there's an argument that I should have just played Smoldering Crater there. Pop Candy Trail. Okay, Mountain, Pyrite, Spell Bomb, over to them. And now we got the Red Blasts up. Preordain, sure. Do I cycle this? No, I don't. Let's pop Pyrite to draw. I do need to make sure that I'm hitting lands every turn though, so let's Mountain Cycle Oliphant. Another Mine. All right, let's get Mountain into play so we have double Red Blast open, and then we'll probably play Smoldering Crater next, or just cycle it. How's Rudtron been treating you so far? Well, we're only on round three, but it's, so far I like the deck. Cleansing Wildfire, targeting the mountain, or the tower. Sure, Flow to Mana. Use the ability, mountain. One, two, three, four. All right, before this fizzles, I will cycle Crater. So they're just holding up Counterspell Mana. All right, Candy Trail, trigger. Tower, Rolling Thunder. I don't particularly want Rolling Thunder. I don't even particularly want the tower, actually. It's going to be pretty hard to assemble Tron. Let's just bin this. All right, uh, Mine, and we'll just pass. So next turn we can cast Boarding Party. Although I may want to actually hold off on that and have it with Red Blast open to counter their own counter spells. But then again, like it's not the worst thing. Also, the three toughness means it dies to a lot of their removal anyway. Like it dies to Scred. So I probably don't fight over it. I'm not sure. One top, one bottom off that Preordain. Plays a tap land. I just don't like going shields down either. I feel like I just shouldn't do that. All right, end of turn, pop Candy Trail. Filigree Familiar. Ooh, Crimson Fleet, and we can fight over it with Double Blast. Excellent. Crimson Fleet. Hydro, all right, Red Blast that. Crimson Fleet resolves. Monarch Trigger. Pirate Spell Bomb draw, and we still got a Red Blast and Sinkhole open. All right, I think we got this game locked up now, because now we can just protect the Monarch and outdraw them. Murmuring, Blast it. Fights it with Counter Spell, but then we can Sinkhole this before they get anything out of it. All right, Sinkhole, kill that. Let's play Filigree Familiar. Trigger this. Let's play Pyrite Spell Bomb. Then attack here. They take five. We drew. We drew a red blast. Wow. Our third red blast. Cast into the fire on this. That's fine. They're just passing. All right. Let's draw a card with Pyrite. Okay. Uh, let's play Boarding Party with Blast Backup. Cascade. Cascading into Self Assembler. Woo! The spice. Yeah. All right. Locked it up. Okay. So we are on the draw. And we have some mana with Volcanic Spite to cycle. This seems okay. I'll keep it. Island, pass the turn. All right, play Crater. Back to them. Lorien Reveal, cycle. Gets another island. Plays Modern Age. Okay, so it's Familiars, probably. Power Plant, go. I assume we're probably not going to have anything to Spite, so we're just going to cycle Oliphant for a land. They discarded False Summoning, counter target creature. Cycle Ash Barons for another island. Really? God Pharaoh's Faithful. All right. Uh, cycle Oliphant. Get a mountain. Now that I've seen Oliphant, I don't think I've ever seen the white cycle card from Lotter anywhere because it's the worst one. Okay. Uh, this can't attack, thankfully. So I guess I just pass some Volcanic Spite Modern Age and then try to land Crimson Fleet. Trigger God Pharaoh's Faithful and they're going to go Archaeomancer or something. Getting back False Summoning. Sure. All right. So we go, man. All right. Volcanic Spite this. What am I putting back? So I can drop Crimson Fleet, and then if they just have removal for it, they can Archaeomancer attack us, steal the Monarch. All right, let's put away Cannonade. I think it is probably better to just land Crimson Fleet here, and if they have removal, so be it. Every time I play these, like, uh, Snap. Ugh. So they have a counter spell, so then they can counter the Crimson Fleet, and they steal the Monarch. Yeah, of course. Every time I play them, I feel like I'm a Death Shadow deck, where it's just like, you're so precarious. All right, cycle Oliphant. Make sure we hit our land drop. Well, we got to force our way through that. So yeah, they're going to counter it, but what can we do? Play Crimson Fleet, then they'll counter it. Uh-huh. So hopefully next turn we can play a Crimson Fleet or just like boarding party to steal it back. Mole Drifter. 
Ghostly flicker. Yuck. Ew. Ew. Disgusting. Ugh, I can't rolling thunder both of them, so... Cycle Oliphant. Grab a mountain. Play the mountain. I'm short on Crimson Fleet, so I guess... Or on uh, Forwarding Party, so I guess I just play Crimson Fleet, steal this back for the turn. Then they'll steal it back with Mold Drifter, but what can you do? So they have Ghostly Flicker, so now they can f Ghostly Flicker infinitely if I don't kill Archaeomancer right now. And they can do it twice a turn. I think we just lose. All right, Crimson Fleet, take the Monarch back. Monarch draw trigger. Do we draw Bolt or anything? No, we don't. All right, Sunscape Familiar, Modern Age. So then Mold Drifter steals it back. Uh-huh, Preordain, yep. So they still have Ghostly Flicker Mana open. One top, one bottom, plays a land. All right, I think I just attack them and see what they do. They can actually multi-block Crimson Fleet, but because I like, I just need to stop their ghostly flicker shenanigans. I just don't have much, mo I don't have enough mana for Rolling Thunder to matter, right? All right, go to combat, swing. No blocks, steal the Monarch back. They have Counterspell mana open, like they have the ghostly flicker open. It's just like impossible. So what do I do here? I play like Self-Assembler Candy Trail. I guess let's candy trail first and see if we're going to draw into instant speed removal. We are drawing into instant speed removal. Also, the map is so sort of helpful. So top this, top this. So I have to leave candy trail open so I can bolt the Archaeomancer in response unless they also have ephemerate. <laughs> it's just so disgusting. Yeah, all right. Let's go to our end step and see if they respond to the Monarch trigger. No, they didn't. Cycles Ash Barons. So they're just not going to ever cast Ghostly Flicker if they're in a position where I can hit them. Yep. And they steal the Monarch back. They also gain a bunch of life off this dude, so we can't even race them. All right, yeah, so there's the Monarch. God Pharaoh's Faithful. Plays another Archaeomancer. What do they have in their graveyard? Snap. False Summoning is the target. Sure. Chancery. Oh, let's draw with Candy Trail. I mean, there's just no point in trying to bolt anything right now. So we drew Tower. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's just no shot, right? There's just no shot. All right, let's play map. I assume they'll allow this to resolve. Tower. I mean, I don't see anything I can do other than just cast boarding party. And then they'll counter it. And then hopefully I hit cascade into something useful. Because just holding up bolt is not helping. So boarding party, cascade. We cascaded into bolt. There's literally no reason to target anything of theirs because they'll just flicker it. So let's target them. All right, is this getting countered, right? Yeah, counter, go to combat, attack, ghostly flicker, sure. So they get back the ghostly flicker and then they're gonna block here, block here. All right, let's kill Mold Drifter at least. <laughs> oh boy. We can just never resolve anything because they're a counter spell deck and they're just gonna keep drawing a million cards every turn. Don't they have an infinite mono loop with uh, Snap and the Chanceries? Deep analysis, draw some cards. Actually going to clean up with 10 cards in their hand. Very cool. All right, map, find the final piece, play the final piece. All right, we've got access to 12 mana. How many times can they ghostly flicker? One, two, three, so they can do it. They can do it, grab, and then the ghostly flicker can target both Archaeomancers and uh, one gets back ghostly flicker and the other gets back counter spell and then they just counter our guys. We haven't actually seen straight up counter spell from them, have we? All right, cast boarding party, cast the expedition map, ephemerate their dude, yeah, uh-huh. Gets back the Counterspell. Why are they not playing actual Counterspell? Or, or have they just not played it yet? Because they're just... The only things that they've needed to counter is this stuff. Um, all right. Familiar. Ghostly Flicker. Let's try to kill one of them. Prohibit. Counter a thing. Sure. There ain't no shot, right? Like, there's no reason to continue playing this game, right? They've shown us they have a thing that hits anything now. I guess technically, maybe Rolling Thunder can resolve. They have so much life that it doesn't matter though, and they can always ghostly flicker anything that's relevant for us to kill. All right, let's just go to the next game. All right, uh, we definitely want Red Blast. We want Cannonade because again, all the flickering effects, their guys still die. Uh, deck playing a bunch of ghostly flickers and ephemerates. Volcanic Spite is trash. Bolts seem to mostly be trash. We still want Sinkhole in case they're playing Murmuring Mystic or something. Yeah, that, that seems correct. Now, you know what? Let's let's cut a Rolling Thunder and bring in spell, the fourth Spell Bomb. It's possible Rolling Thunder just isn't good at all, and I just should just be cutting that completely. All right, the only way I think I win this matchup is landing the Monarch and protecting it, or uh, just out mana valuing them with, like, Tron into boarding parties and such. Or just make sure they never get their loop going with Red Blasts. We have three towers in our opening hand. 
no red mon or anything else, but we have candy trail and filigree. All right, keep. And the cards in our hand are just good, so use candy trail to fix. All right, ooh, hmm, hmm. Let's not jump the gun here. Let's top both of these, preordain. All right, I'm just gonna pop this now so we can just F6 through everything. And then the Oliphant fixes red, or I can just play filigree familiar. Modern age. It is probably better that I have red blast open though. Do I just red blast this? I do need it to make sure the monarch is protected. Mm. All right, mountain cycle. Yeah, you know what? Let's just blow this up. Ooh, they have to pick up a land and now they don't have the mana to counter our guy unless they have blue blast, but let's just try to get this in. Aha, it resolved. Deep analysis. Ooh, they don't even have the stuff. All right, filigree. And then let's just attack with the red blast still open. Deep analysis flashback. Yeah, that's fine. Faithful is also fine. Clean up step. Discards an island. All right. Mountain. I don't see any reason to sinkhole this. So let's just combat attack. Okay, they go to seven. I'm not going to slam self-assembler or anything. I guess I could just play another Commodore here, even though I already have the Monarch. Yeah, all right. Let's just play another Commodore. Resolves. End step. Cycles Ash Barons. So we have a lot of power in play with Red Blast and sinkhole open. Not sinkhole at the moment, but yeah. Okay, I think in this matchup, probably the Rolling Thunders are just not going to ever be relevant. So let's just do this. Two Tron lands, no red mana is not keepable. All right, this is much be better, I guess. Keep, and what am I throwing away? Probably Pyrite Spell Bomb, but it's one of the cards that lets us redraw. The Filigree Familiar is also pretty bad, right? Doesn't really block or attack them well. Yeah, let's just throw that away. Would I counter a Modern Age if they played it? I think I would. Cycles Ash Barons. Azorius Chancery. All right, well, play this, play Candy Trail. I want Oliphant. All right, I need to play things. So uh, there's nothing too threatening on three. All right, so cycle this, Mountain, play Mountain, and then we just hold Blasts plus Cantripping open. All right, crack the Candy Trail, another Oliphant. We do need to absolutely make sure that we're hitting lands every turn. So Mountain, back to them. They are also hitting lands every turn. Deep Analysis, that is fine. All right, pop this to draw a card. Another pyrite. Land? No, man. If it was land, we could have protected Crimson Fleet, but as is, we can't. So let's just go pyrite, draw a card. Still not a land. All right, back to them. Sunscape familiar. Yeah, can't do anything about that. Deep analysis flashback. Sure. I'm not going to counter their draw spells. All right, I will counter that because it's actually a threat. So land. Yeah, there we go. Crimson Fleet, Hydro, counter it back. Monarch, draw. Back to them. Now we just got to make sure they never resolve anything that can attack us. Our Chaomancer picking up Hydroblast. That's a problem. Ephemerate their dude. Oh my god. All right. So they have Hydroblast in their hand. F me. All right. So I want to make sure that this Ephemerate is not in their graveyard, right? So there's no way that I can do that. So it's going to be upkeep. I guess I could cannonade right now. And then when they Hydroblast it, I just kill our Chaomancer so they don't have the loop. Because just landing self-assembler here seems like a terrible idea because if they just have to play anything that gets rid of it and then they steal the monarch. They could have also multiple counter spells in their hand, so I do probably have to do this now. So cannonade, we do that, and then we'll blow this up, then map, and step monarch. All right, then ephemerate rebounds, but they've got, you know, they just blink a dude, that's fine. Mortuary Mire putting the Archaeomancer back and then casting deep analysis. Oh my god. You've just got to be kidding me. They just reassembled everything in one turn. They've got a single... What did they get back in their hand? They have the Hydroblast back in their hand now, right? Jesus Christ. They have everything back in their hand, so I can never stop this? What the fuck do I even do here? They have Hydroblast in their hand. I guess I can prevent them from... No, I can't actually prevent them from even doing anything, right? Yeah, all right. So map. Let's just try to get some more mana going. Like Candy Trail. What's on top? Oliphant, Self-Assembler. I don't want either of those cards at the moment. Bottom, bottom. So trigger the Monarch. Yeah. All right, Ephemerate Rebounds. Will they rebound it on our Chaomancer? No, they won't because they're going to steal the Monarch from us. Mm-hmm. So Bolt, then they just counter it. Yep. So now they steal the Monarch. Jesus Christ. All right. So we lose. They have infinite Hydro Blast loops. Candy Trail. I mean, I can play Self-Assembler. What does that matter? Well, it's the only thing that doesn't get Hydro Blasted, so all right, play Self-Assembler. Grab another Self-Assembler, and then let's play Candy Trail. I mean, the boarding parties do Cascade, so like, I just need to find what, more Red Blast? No, I'm, I'm down three Red Blasts already. I don't know what I could even find to get me out of this. I guess I kind of want to get Tron Mana. All right, let's bottom this, top this. 
Hmm. All right. Ephemerate comes back. Snap. All right. We lose. They can hydro and snap everything that we play for the rest of the game. So that's that. Oh, uh, this is fine, I think. We got mana. We've got some fixing. We've got some good threats on the top end, although it will take us a while to get there. Basilisk Gate. All right. Tower, Candy Trail. Put this on the bottom. And I guess I do want mana. Now nah, I got mana from the Oliphants. Let's just bottom that. Boris Garrison, pick the gate up. Sure. Land, and then we'll just pop Candy Trail. So back to them. The return of Basilisk Gate. And paying for this dude. Sure. Pop this. Well, that makes our Crimson Fleet Commodore pretty bad. Ooh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Back to them. Charon Manas. Let's go. So another Overseer with Planes. All right, I think I'm just going to play Oliphant first so that the boarding party gets trampled next turn. So let's cast Oliphant and play a Candy Trail. Trigger. Another Oliphant is fine. I do kind of want a second red source. I have seven, eight, nine mana. Not really, though. All right, bottom this, top this. Candy Trail again. Uh, Not really. Bottom this, top this. Over to them. Ephemerate. All right, lots of cards. This is sorcery speed, right? Yeah. Ardent Elementalist. All right, and then they have infinite ephemerates, unless we can find removal for this dude. Okay, well, boarding party. Cascade trigger. Cast this dude. Go to combat. Sewing. Oliphant trigger. Block, block here. Sure. They're just going to allow these guys to die instead of ephemerating? Okay, well, pop the candy trail. Ephemerate to this dude. Sure. It is a bolt. Back to them. Then Ephemerate Rebounds, then hit this guy. Bolt's our boarding party. And then Guardian of the Guild Pact. So we can't attack into or bolt this out of the way. Okay, so we got to play Oliphant first so that we can trample through it. Hmm. I can play Crimson Fleet and then bolt this dude. And then the only way this hits us is if they kill Filigree Familiar. Hmm. That seems like a precarious play. I just don't like going like Oliphant pass back to you. That seems so bad. All right, we do need a second red source. So Mountain Cycle, the Oliphant. Play this, play this. So cast Oliphant. I guess I don't need to bolt this thing. Let's just pop Candy Trail. All right, Self Assembler is going to be very helpful against this thing. Dawn Bringer Cleric. Gain two life. Sacred Cat. Okay. Cast Boarding Party. Cascade Trigger. Cast Expedition Map. And let's try to go to combat. Swing here. Oliphant, target this. Prismatic Strands, you say. All right, so before this resolves, I've got to bolt their dudes, right? So let's bolt Inspiring Overseer. And there's nothing that I can bolt that's not going to prevent them from just multi-blocking our guys, but what can you do? All right, Prismatic Strands, they name red, they take no damage, and they get to freely kill either Oliphant or Boarding Party, presumably Oliphant. I guess I could have prevented them from killing Oliphant by also bolting the Dawnbringer Cleric, but that didn't seem like terribly good. Yeah, all right, that's fine. All right, let's just map for another tower and pass back to them. Maybe I should have, I don't know. Crimson Fleet Commodore, that's rough. All right, I guess I do have to force them to use the Prismatic Strands now. Actually, no, I don't, because, hmm. I guess with that trigger on the stock, I'm going to try to bolt this. And then, yeah, they can Prismatic, that's fine. They got to use it at some point. All right, they just allowed it to die, interesting. Because then we can play our own Crimson Fleet to steal the Monarch back. And then we've got Self-Assembler. Go grab another one. Don't have enough mana to play the last one. And then I can't attack into them anyway. So, all right, draw off the Monarch. All the font. So they're at four gates. So this becomes a 6-7. So I can't multi-block it here. But I can prevent them from taking the Monarch back by blocking with Filigree Familiar. Late to dinner, getting back Ardent Elementalist from the graveyard. <sighs> and then that gets back Ephemerate. And then they have the Infinite Loop again. I'm honestly starting to think they should just ban Ephemerate out of Popper because these are the worst play patterns. The hold, oh, I'm just going to Ephemerate my Recursion guy over and over and over on an infinite loop. And it's a one mana instant, so you can't even like try to bolt it in response. So they have the infinite Ephemerate loop now. I don't know what I can even do to, to get through this. I don't have any good attacks. So what do they have? They can just keep getting bolt back and then eventually kill all of our guys. So we just have to like flood the board is the only thing I can think to do. I have no attacks here that are actually good. I guess a self-assembler can attack, and then they just ephemerate their dude. How many self-assemblers can I play? I have nine, or no, yeah, nine, 11, 13, 16 mana. So I can play all of them, 
Or I can just play two of them plus a Oliphant. I mean, if I attack here, they just go Ephemerate, get Ephemerate back. Like, there's no point. So cast Oliphant, play Self-Assembler, grab another Self-Assembler, play Self-Assembler, and grab the last one. And then none of my attacks are any good, so we just pass and draw off the Monarch. Oh boy. Ephemerate gets back late to dinner. Oh, right, and then they can just get their own Crimson Fleet dude back. I can't even Rolling Thunder them out of the game because they have infinite Prismatic Strands as well. Yeah, target that, get Femorate back, get back Ephemerate. Inspiring Overseer, are they really not going to just late to dinner this guy? They must, right? They're just going to late to dinner, steal the Monarch, and make it so that our attacks are not good. Maybe they were trying to see if they hit another land drop so that they could have Ephemerate open. Another Overseer. All right, so now they just have Ephemerate open. So the Prismatic Strands stops all of my red sources from hurting them. All right, I guess we cast Boarding Party. Cast Boarding Party, Cascade. Cascade into Filigree, sure. I guess I force them to flash it back, right? Go to combat. The problem is they do that and then I just like lose a bunch of attackers. I can swing with just Oliphant to get trample damage through a self-assembler. Or I can make Filigree big enough. Yeah, all right, let's attack with just all of these guys. And then Oliphant targets the Filigree familiar. So yeah, then they're gonna flash back Strand so that this doesn't do any damage. Yeah, that's fine. Flashback strands. Wait, doesn't that mean that Ardent doesn't do any damage? D does it say just opponents? Yeah, so Ardent won't do any damage, right? So they don't actually kill my Oliphant. So they should have blocked here with the Guardian. Okay, this thing dies. We draw a card. All right, Self-Assembler. We're out, right? Yeah, that's it. Tap this, Filigree. If we draw Instant Speed Removal, I'll kill Ardent, I guess. If we didn't. All right. Actually, they have a Late to Dinner in their hand, right? So it doesn't even matter. So this thing can just fly over and steal the Monarch, and then we can get the Monarch back with our own Crimson Fleet Commodore. They ephemerated their Overseer. That must mean they have another one, right? Because otherwise they would have just targeted Ardent. Journey to Nowhere. What do they even target on our board? Just this guy? Sure. Sacred Cat Returns. Faithless Looting. And there's Prismatic Strands, so now we still can't hit them. Although we do have a bunch of self-assemblers. They just didn't attack. Why wouldn't they at least attack with this to steal the Monarch? Just doesn't make any sense. All right, go to combat. So don't attack with these guys, but do attack with the rest of this. Yeah, and then Oliphant targets one of the self-assemblers. So yeah, block there. It's fine to suicide attack with these dudes because we just need to draw more cards and just these random 2-2s are not helping. So yeah, block, block, block here. Man, like even if they ephemerate this, it's not even good, right? Like to bolt it because... <laughs> Then they just late to dinner. Yeah, Prismatic, sure. So they at least take 10, right? Or no, uh, 12, because these all got through. Ephemerate this dude, uh-huh. He comes back and picks up Ephemerate, mm-hmm. Damage, please. All right, they're at five. We draw a card off Filigree. Crimson Fleet Commodore. Well, we got nothing to do, so Mountain. I mean, these Crimson Fleets, I just got to keep them around so I can take the Monarch back, right? Yeah. End step, Drew, Magmatic, Sinkhole, sure. Make a treasure token with the gate. Uh-huh. So then Ephemerate rebounds, targeting this thing. All right, let's just try to kill it. Bolt that. Ephemerate again. Sinkhole this. Prismatic strands, sure. All right, so they get one trigger, and then this Ephemerate does not go back into their... No, this Ephemerate does go into their graveyard. Plays another gate. So they are attacking us. We can't block. They steal the Monarch. Maybe I should have held on to Bolt to Bolt them. I don't know. I feel like the amount of colorless stuff we have should be good enough. So Prismatic strands in the graveyard. Gets a cat out. I do have to, I guess, force them to use it. Volcanic Spite, you say. So if I do this now, they just strands in response. So let's go to combat. Here, 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 here. So blocks that, blocks that, blocks that. Nope. Double block here, block there, block there. Go to damage. I'm fine going to damage here. Nope, nope. Change place over here. Nope. Block there, block there. Uh-huh. Okay, that order's fine. Priority back to you. Then they strands, and then I can't respond. Yeah, so if you name red, this doesn't kill this, so that's fine. Chooses red, uh-huh. So then we kill your elementalist. Second main, play another Commodore so we steal the Monarch back. Go to end step. Ephemerate rebound, target that, try to kill it, get rid of a land. Okay, that was quite the grind. We're not Dovery with it yet though. Okay, so I want the cannonades to deal with Ephemerate shenanigans, although... Prismatic strands is a problem. I guess flaring pain prevents the strands from stopping our damage. Uh, do I want cast? No. Red blast? No. Pyrite spell bomb does not get affected by prismatic strands, so that's good. So what's bad? 
Uh, bad is Rolling Thunder. No way I'm casting a gigantic Rolling Thunder into Prismatic Strands dot deck. Although maybe I want one just in case they tap out. What website is this? Sir, you're at a Wendy's. Uh, the sinkhole doesn't matter because all their creatures are small and die to bolt. I assume I don't want some of this. I guess I can combine Flaring Pain with Rolling Thunder to kill their stuff. If I have a ton of mana, which I may actually have, because this looks like this match goes long. I guess the only argument is, is Bolt better or worse than Volcanic Spite, because the card sort of matters and Prismatic doesn't prevent us from loot, uh, rummaging the card. This also goes to their face, which can be relevant. I don't know, it's, and it's cheaper. Let's do this, I guess. One land, double candy trail to find more lands. Okay, and Pyrite. Cliffgate, back to us. Oh, and we got all the font, excellent. All right, candy trail. Ooh, bottom this, top this. Rafine's Informant, getting rid of the strands, okay. Um, I'm definitely gonna cycle Oliphant, right? So I guess I cycle it now and play Candy Trail to fix the next draws. Grab a mountain, play Candy Trail. All right, well, we're not assembling Tron, so I guess I'm fine with having another tower. Bottom Oliphant, and this is fine. Spirited Companion. I'm probably gonna pirate this, I don't know. Actually, I guess I just play filigree, right? Tower, filigree. I mean, if they just basilisk gate it, I guess I will block to save some damage. Dust to dust on, wow, filigree and candy trail. Okay, I can still pyrite it. Uh, let's pop candy trail in case I hit power plant. No, pyrite, let's just kill it now before they have ephemerate open. Shock this, back to them. Core Skyfisher to pick this dude up, right? They should have attacked first if that was the case. Oh, they're just gonna, no, they, well, they still should have attacked first. Another tower, one, two, three, four, five. All right, self-assembler, so spirited companion. Journey to nowhere. Well, we, we have another self-assembler, but we are getting hit in the air with flying creatures. Oh boy, oh lordy lord. Boarding party, cascade, bolt. Man, they can have ephemerate open. They also have strands, right? Well, I'm definitely casting it. I guess the only question is, if they just don't have ephemerate, then I guess this is fine. All right, target their spirited companion. Well, at least that taps it for them to cast the strands. So then that fizzles out. This is here, but it doesn't matter. And then we assemble, trigger, go get the other assembler. And then we just pass. They're playing a much more reasonable game this time. It feels like a lot of just uh, generic, like Boros synthesizer type value stuff. Crimson Acolyte, target creature gains pro red and it is pro red. All right, well, they're basilisk gating this. We can't block. Take a bunch of damage. All right, so I can Rolling Thunder everything here except the Crimson Acolyte. This replaces itself, I guess. Oh, wait, no. I have to go find a mountain, right? <clears throat> hmm. If I map for a mountain, then I have 6, 8, 10 damage available off Rolling Thunder. So I can do 5, which is kill all of these guys and still play Self Assembler. All right, so map, activate, go grab a mountain, mountain, Rolling Thunder, this, this, and this. So done. All right, kill all of those. If they have a removal, I, I have to make sure that I have multiple blockers for Basilisk Gate on this guy. So play Self Assembler, grab another Self Assembler, and then back to the Spirited Companion. So Basilisk Gate's plus five right now. Rafine's Informant. This card's Electricery. Oh, second Basilisk Gate. That's awful. Sacred Cat. Oh boy, we need to draw, I guess, Fiery Cannonade. Yeah. All right, I don't have any attacks here, so... Play Crimson Fleet, trigger this to get the Monarch, and then I have enough to play multiple self-assemblers, right? And potentially all the font, self-assembler, then grab the, no, no, then that's it. Okay, so we're out. And then all the font. So we're not going to attack. Then Monarch triggers, do Candy Trail, sure. Basilisk Gate on the cat. Oh my god, this is such a huge cat. 15-15. I guess I just throw a boarding party in front of it then. Even if I triple block with the self-assemblers, they, yeah, anything else I block with, they can just Crimson Fleet target it to give it pro red. So I just throw Boarding Party in front of here. Is that correct? Or do I just throw Crimson Fleet in front of it? I guess this has Trample and this doesn't. This can give this Trample though. All right, let's just throw Boarding Party. All right, they gained a bajillion of life. So Flaring Pain. Well, that would have been useful a little bit ago. All right, Candy Trail, Bolt Cannonade. I can cannonade on my own end step, and then they can only save one creature. No, wait, I can can I can flaring pain cannonade kill all their guys. Yeah, so bottom, top, draw with the candy trail, and then cast cannonade. 
And then I assume they'll try to save one of their dudes with Crimson Acolyte, right? Yeah. And then we go Flaring Pain, Prevent All, the Prevention. And then we kill all their dudes, Combat, Swing All. This target's here. Which deck are you playing? Red Tron, Ingot Chewer to blow up Self Assembler. Aren't they still just dead on the board though? Cat returns. Indeed. All right, three and two with Red Tron. So, uh, let's see, a couple of things. I feel like the sideboard could use some work. Um, kind of want four cannonades in the 75. Secondly, I don't know how good these cast into the fires are. I guess we we never really played against any like super artifact heavy deck. So they're obviously better in those circumstances. It just feels kind of weird to have like four cast, four pyrite spell bombs. I feel like these could be different. Then there's matches like this one, like the Prismatic Strand matchups, where you really, really want to have flaring pain. So maybe another flaring pain in the sideboard. Red blasts are obviously good. Uh, Rolling Thunder is only good when you get a bunch of mana going, and also it's the one card in our deck that's bad to cascade into off of Boarding Party. So I don't know if you could replace this with anything else. The Self-Assemblers grew on me as the games went on, but there are cards like these and these where it feels like maybe there's something better you can get. But I guess that this solves a bunch of issues. Like, it's just a thing that you can play on curve that blocks stuff, and it's Edict Protection for your bigger cards. Uh, don't really like Volcanic Spike that much. Again, there's just so many Ephemerate decks running around and just other decks where it's like, it's not great to play, to pay two mana to do three damage. And yeah, you can like rummage a card away. I also don't think you need Smoldering Crater. And I understand that this deck's plan is not to be all in on Tron mana, right? And that you are playing like a slower game with control elements with all this removal. So you don't technically need all 12 Tron lands. But man, it just doesn't feel good not to be able to assemble Tron as often. I feel like you definitely want all 12. And the thing is, I get it. You can't cut the red sources because you do need a certain amount of red sources. I would rather cut like spells just to get all the Tron mana going. But then again, I don't, you know, this is the first time I'm playing this deck. So maybe it is correct to only have three of mine in Power Plant. But the games where we had Tron were a lot better than the games when we didn't. Otherwise, uh, it was pretty fun. I also can't help but feel that I want some sort of a bigger threat to play. Like maybe one of these Rolling Thunders could be an Olamog's Crusher or something. I just, there were a lot of games where I felt like I wanted just some bigger threat on the board that would be an issue for our opponent to deal with more so than just like, you know, because there were games where like Boarding Party or Oliphant alone weren't good enough or like the Self-Assemblers weren't good enough. So maybe you could cut one of the Rolling Thunders for Olamog's Crusher. But anyways, that is Redcon. <laughs>